All right, it's 10 o'clock. Please welcome Peter Larsen to tell us a bit about remote work in Corona times and his experiences. Okay, thank you very much, Max. So good morning, party people. Hope you're all fresh. Uh, we are Klein aber Fein, a small and fine group today. Um, what you're looking at here is the view that I had on the 28th of April this early this year, because I'd started getting up at five o'clock in the morning uh, to go and photograph. And later I started uh, running in the morning as well at this god awful time of stupid o'clock, uh, getting up at five and being out and running at half past five. And later I started cycling at that time as well. And that's really direct. Um, consequence of the corona situation um and so for me in a lot of ways uh life has changed uh radically uh because i'm working at home now um i myself have to be a bit careful with the whole corona thing and so um yeah my my life uh, has changed but really for the better i've started doing uh sport i'm spending a lot more time outside i'm getting up a lot earlier in the day But I ask myself the question, uh, you know, to what degree has it really, uh, really changed? And that's that's what the talk is about today, is uh, that everything changes, but in some ways everything remains the same. Um, as Max said, my name is Peter Larson. I'm an agile coach at Trusted Shops. Trusted Shops provide uh, security or trust for people buying online. Uh, I... Uh, wasted my youth uh, with video games, working for a company uh, you may have heard of called Electronic Arts, uh, doing uh, design, advertising, marketing, and later uh, product development uh, on games like uh, Medal of Honor Command and, and Command and Conquer. Um, I'm quite old, uh, so I was born before Man Walked on the Moon. Uh, and uh, about five years ago, I decided that what I really liked to do was to deal with the people who make games and products rather than um, the product themselves. I found that, uh, and that's why I, I moved over to be a scrum master and now an agile coach. I serve three teams at Trusted Shops, two data services team and an office IT team, uh, which I enjoy very much. And I've got some great people working that I, I'm uh, allowed to help. Um, Yeah, and so this is the theme for today is uh, how everything changed, but some things, uh, well, really fundamentally everything remains the same. And this is one of the things that um, uh, the, the, the top line of uh, what I'm going to talk to today is that, okay, most of us work uh, in a, uh, with a background of constant change, right? So. Um, and while the corona crisis has turned our working lives on its head, in fact, uh, what I'm going to argue is that uh, what's important are the existing values, principles, and practices that we work with. Um, and even though we sit in different places and we use different tools, the basic core team dynamic has not fundamentally changed. That's my um, argument for today. So what happened? Well, uh, Corona arrived and um, at uh, Trusted Shops, um, they were relatively, the, the uh, leadership was relatively, uh, was very careful, very conservative, uh, took, took a very safety orientated uh, approach. Um, they took very, very fast decisions um, and um, Uh, from 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 the start on, it wasn't so like oh we got to wait to hear what's going to happen. Uh, they were very good at uh, taking fast decisions, and uh, so they were reacting to this crisis that had just arrived. But in fact, if you've got good management and got good leadership, be it on a team level, be it on a, a department, business unit, or company level. Politically, uh, we could perhaps see that uh, in the political discourse in Germany at the moment, um, that uh, they're taking a fair while to, to make the decisions. But that wasn't the case with us. The decisions were made very quickly. Um, so 
uh, in a response to this new situation. But in fact, that should be a normal state of affairs, right? That's my argument. Um, what was very, very good was a very clear communication about the expectations from the uh, of us as uh, employees and as teams, uh, what the company was doing and what the current policy was. Uh, so we still today get a daily email directly from the CEO um, uh, talking uh, in the first part of the email always about what's the current state of affairs as pertains to Corona. Um, and then it will also talk about uh, uh, changes that have taken place within the company, uh, often with uh, relationship to uh, Corona. So what happened? Well, <clears throat> we all went off home. Uh, we packed up our stuff, and within about a week, um, uh, we we all went home uh, dur uh, during one week, and it was kind of like, okay, you can start going or, or, uh, Well, we were told directly, go home now if you want to, um, but at the very latest by the end of the week. I think this was in March. And so we literally packed up those stuff. Some of us have laptops, uh, but some of us have towers as well. So uh, that was a fair, fair job uh, to get everything um, packed up and, and taken off home. Um, uh, but we did it. We just packed up our stuff and, and went home. Um, so this caused a lot of um, kind of, uh, oh, my God, is this going to work? Uh, a lot of consternation, uh, a little bit of panic, uh, some insecurity. Um, but in fact, uh, very quickly, we kind of got the feedback, well, that went rather well, uh, surprisingly, right? that uh, in fact uh, particularly our office IT people um, did an awesome job of getting us all home um, and and uh, helping us uh, some people technically just with information others with uh, hardware etc um, but this kind of uh, shows that I think uh, two weeks before it happened I think uh, more than half of the company would not have been able to imagine that this would happen. But in fact, because we had to do it, we did it. Yeah? We say necessity is the mother of invention, or in Germany, Nordmarkt der right? So, um, yeah, so that was the first big surprise was, hey, I haven't grown two heads, I haven't turned blue, the world hasn't exploded, and we are working very well. Um, many of you may have seen this joke uh on the uh like going around about who led the digital transformation of your company was it the ceo the cto or was it COVID 19 and i think it's very very clearly the case that uh corona opened our eyes to possibilities of uh, things which were uh possible so um you could say that's a big change that's something new which is true in a way but people like me who are working on um, making organizations more agile, uh, making them leaner, uh, believing that new ways of uh, working are important, we are working on this digital transformation all the time, right? And I'm sure a lot of you are as well. Um, and so, again, uh, whilst this all happened very quickly and it was a big change, in fact, it was just... Uh, accelerating something that was already going on, which was to try and make companies more agile, uh, faster moving, uh, leaner. Um, a lot of the stuff that we had to deal with immediately at the start was filling the hardware gaps, for example. Um, so simple things like headphones. So the headphones I'm wearing now, I'm wearing because I got feedback that uh, these uh, small sort of plug-in things uh, actually um, are very irritating for the listeners. Um, and so simple, practical improvements like uh, dealing with hardware uh, was one of the, the, the first uh, steps that we had to take, uh, and that worked quite well, um, and which was very uh, yeah, which was one of the most important things to begin with, a really, really practical job. Again, that's really something that we're doing every day, that we're helping our colleagues uh, to communicate better, be it 
either in their communication skills or with equipment they have. Another big uh, aspect was the tools that we needed. So, for example, you know, most of us working in product development, uh, we have our walls full of pictures, right? We have our walls full of um, our work, our uh, roadmaps, uh, our values, our principles, um, our tickets, our uh, sprint boards, uh, all that stuff is up on the wall and suddenly that stuff had been taken away from us. So one example, something that we needed to deal with very quickly was uh, were, were things like whiteboard tools and also other tools. Uh, the people suddenly had to share um, uh, files in a different way. We had to get some people up and running with VPN, which they could, VPN, which they couldn't, uh, they weren't used to having to use because they were always in the office. Uh, so the whole tool thing was uh, a big challenge. Uh, but again, just filling in gaps, uh, which appeared through the change of uh, working from on-site to remote. Um, so really practical stuff. Uh, and just for me as an agile coach or a scrum master, simply helping uh, people uh, remove impediments so that they could uh, do their job. Um, of course, one of the things that we really uh, love uh, about working uh, in the office is um, the meeting each other for coffee, right? Or going for lunch together or uh, taking a walk in the park, uh, taking a break. And so one of the things that we really focused on uh, early on was creating lots and lots of social spaces. So what you see here is the Friday afternoon pub. Uh, which starts at four o'clock, uh, run by um, a good colleague of mine and uh, a, a, a fun guy in uh, in HR. And it's not run from uh, because he's in HR. It's run by him because he likes doing this stuff. And it really had the idea of a of a pub uh, with uh, a quiz. Another time we played bingo, and uh, so we we made a big effort to. Uh, make that a, f a fun place to meet and to be a um, replacement for uh, meeting in the kitchen, going for lunch, popping next door to, to the next door office and talking to each other. Um, social spaces also uh, were created on team level and things like Slack has uh, a feature, phone a uh, random colleague and speak with this person. Um, the uh, research uh, that came out, some of the first research that came out was that people were having more meetings that were shorter m with fewer people. And I think what that meant was that people who were before talking to each other one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two uh, in the office were now using uh, GoToMeeting, Zoom, Slack, uh, whatever tools uh, you're using to simply catch up with each other, both on a social and on a professional level. Um, we had a, a big focus, uh, particularly as lead, uh, uh, the servant leaders uh, in our group was uh, in the first few weeks doing lots and lots of ones, uh, one on ones, uh, speaking with people. Um, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Can we help you? Uh, what's it looking like at, at home? You know, are you having to work on your own? Are you working? And not that we wanted to um, to snoop into people's lives, we would, but we did want to know whether they were doing well, if they were okay. And um, so, uh, to begin with, uh, we did lots of one-on-ones. Um, a couple of people are not so comfortable with video communication. I don't know if it's a cultural thing in Northern Europe or whatever, uh, but I had to dig up some research that shows that communication when you can see each other is much, much more efficient than if you can't see each other. So the jump, you know yourself perhaps, the jump from email to a telephone call and then the jump from a telephone call to a video call, they're enormous. They're really, really big in terms of having empathy, understanding for the, uh, yeah, understanding the person uh, that you're speaking with. And so we had to do a little bit of work on making people understanding, uh, understand the value of being able to see each other 
uh, when you work together. So for a while, it was very much kind of Corona everywhere all the time. So um, the, the servant leaders in, in our team were kind of uh, speaking about it all the time. We we're speaking with the people in the teams all the time. Um, it, almost everything that we were doing. So it's like, what does planning mean uh, in Corona? How does the daily run in Corona? Uh, what are people's uh, mental, uh, you know, uh, mental health? You know, are people okay? Um, what does it mean for the individual people? Uh, team uh, members, uh, this whole Corona thing. Um, uh, you also find out, you know, some people are, are really kind of, oh, I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm not worried about it. Some of us are older and uh, are beginning to fall apart. And so uh, we need to be a little bit more careful. And so all these issues came up, both uh, like on a personal level, professional level, on an individual level, a team level, and a company level. And it felt for a while that it was like, Corona every everywhere all the time, and certainly the the feeling was very much kind of like oh bloody hell it's a nightmare, and it uh, but it very much went sort of from now nah to yay um, the feeling uh, now obviously you can't generalize about everyone right so different people have different uh, responses to this stuff, and I'll speak about uh, two. Uh, distinct groups for uh, a little later on, and how um, how different uh, the whole experience was for those two gr groups. I think one of the key uh, challenges was uh, loneliness. You know that some people, uh, I myself, uh, went literally months without having any face-to-face -face contact with anyone except my daughter. I mean, literally months of all my contact was uh, digital. Now, uh, worryingly, when I was doing really, really well, I felt mentally fit, I felt positive, um, and maybe because I, uh, that perhaps a digital communication is, is, is enough for me, and seeing my daughter once a week is enough for me, I don't know. Uh, but certainly, I think this was one of the early feedbacks was that people were feeling lonely because they were kind of being ripped out of this, environment where they were spending seven, eight, nine hours a day with uh, people who were good colleagues uh, and also um, friends in many cases. Another issue that people were feeling was like they were living on the building side. So uh, where I'm sitting is part of my living room, uh, but I have a desk uh, and the, kind of the desk area is my work area. And it looks like the rest of my living room, but I kind of have a mental uh, a demarcation between that desk and the rest of the room. And the, and the desk doesn't look too bad. But certainly, some people had uh, real problems with, uh, you know, I've got this lovely place I live in, and suddenly I've got an extra PC there, I've got cables everywhere, I've got an extra uh, uh, screen, uh, that, by the way, was a big thing on the hardware uh, side, was uh, people bringing their screens home, uh, that uh, working on two or three screens uh, was a real uh, secret to success and was a real help to people. But you you guys, uh, you people, uh, you probably know that yourself. And then um, people were having technical issues, uh, be it, like in my case, uh, being a technical fuckwit, uh, not having uh, needing lots of uh, support from my technical uh, colleagues, or um, it could be we've had to um, replace some hardware because of uh, coffee accidents um, or unknown accidents, um, and so helping people with all these uh, technical issues, um, updating drivers, whatever um, that that was a big part of it. Um, coming to the point about two different groups, um, it's very, very clear that there's a huge difference between the people with families and particularly young families with uh, really young kids and singles. So I think a lot of us singles, we loved it. We had a great time. Or people who are just in pairs where both pairs are working and they have enough space to give each other space during the day, I think it really, that can work really, really well. Um, but the people with families, um, 
they had a real challenge. And I think, for example, we'd have conferences um, and the child would uh, enter the room of the person speaking at the time and he or she would be really embarrassed. And I think a lot of us made a big effort to say, hey, this is part of our new working world. We should be, and in fact, you know, kids make us human. It's not a bad thing to hear the sounds of a child um, uh, in the background. And we have to accept that, you know, this is one of the things where we have to be flexible um, in uh, uh, how we deal with our colleagues who have children. But this is certainly something where I do think there was a big, big difference. And when I say, I think some of our colleagues uh, with children, if they saw my proposition that uh, everything changes, but uh, really everything stays the same, they'd say, are you mad, right? They would think I'm crazy uh, because they have a different uh, experience. So I, I'd like to underline that, um, that certainly is much more difficult for people with young families. Um, but us singles, we had a great time, right? We saved on uh, commuting time and everything. And so if we look a bit at the other, uh, other side of things, um, on the positive side of, of uh, what happened uh, uh, at the beginning or what's been happening during the corona time is the big, big thing, and this is not just uh, something at trusted shops or with the people I know, but this has actually been reflected in uh, questionnaires and research that's being done is that the added autonomy, the fact that the team manager, the team lead, the department manager, the director, whoever, is not standing and looking over people's shoulders and they're having to make more decisions themselves. They can organize their day better, literally because they're not being observed and they're not being controlled by some kind of manager this is one of the huge things and i, I think this comes up uh, and there are really strong numbers on this all the time and um so i think this is where uh, the corona situation has really opened up the eyes of a lot of people uh, because um working autonomously uh, working with this responsibility taking responsible um decisions uh, uh taking responsible uh responsibility for your own actions for your own output for your own uh organizing yourself uh it's not just uh, managers who think that they know everything and they need to uh micromanage everyone it's also individual um uh, employees team members who've been used to working in, in an environment where they're told what to do all the time, and suddenly this person's not there. And so I think it's coming from two sides. It's showing companies and management that individual uh, employees and teams can work autonomously really, really well. But it's also making it really clear to the people who haven't had perhaps the courage um, or the inclination to take that responsibility to to be autonomous themselves so i think this is one of the uh big positive changes that have come from the corona situation now this is not new either because this is something that people like me coaches uh we are banging on about all the time here people please take responsibility uh please run your uh, take, think of it as your own business you know um if you're motivated, if you're autonomous, you're, you're going to have much more fun. Uh, you're going to be much more productive. Uh, so again, it's an issue that we know about, but it was given a huge boost by uh, Corona. The other thing was flexibility. So lots of things which two weeks before were never going to be possible suddenly became possible. Um, and that was, in fact, one of the things that our uh, leadership said that Trusted Shops was, hey, uh, we are going to give you lots and lots of flexibility. I'll talk uh, about one very specific kind of flexibility uh, in a moment. We're going to give you lots and lots of flexibility, but we want flexibility from you as well, right? So one interesting discussion, for example, was, okay, we're now sitting at home. We're playing phone coffee. Uh, we're using more electricity. Uh, obviously, a lot of company work is done, being done now on my internet uh, uh, bill. But on the other hand, I'm saving a load of time and saving a load of money 
on not having to go into office at the office every day. And for some people, it's like three hours and a high three-figure sum that they're saving. Uh, three hours a day and a high uh, three-figure sum that they're saving every month on traveling. And some people are saying, great, um, you know, give a little, take a little. Uh, it's a give and take thing, right? But other people are still like, really, well, I need to work out down to the last penny uh, whether I'm better off or worse off. And I think that's where we are all called for to be a lot more flexible um, but um, and take the chances uh, that are the opportunities that are offered by this situation. Um, but very clearly, um, all of a sudden, we were doing all sorts of stuff uh, that was never thought of before. Not so much, I think, in the development uh, teams because we had the idea of home office was already there but in departments like legal, uh, controlling, sales, uh, where uh, you know everybody really needs to sit at their desk at quarter to nine every morning, blah, 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 blah. You know, all those guys suddenly thought, uh, saw that there was lots of other ways of working. Also in terms of tools that we were using, how fast things happened. Um, you know, we had a, uh, we had a, uh, uh, issue in one team that we couldn't hear each other. Yeah, so a couple of us we stuck some headphones in uh, in envelopes and sent them to the people uh, that we couldn't hear. Uh, it's just a flexible way of doing things. Um, the other great thing, of course, is quality of life. Right, not sitting in some tin box on a motorway somewhere polluting the fucking world. Um, this was great. I mean, I really noticed it. The first picture that you saw. Uh, uh, that was a big, big change for me, how quiet the world turned for that few weeks where people weren't going to work and there was a real lockdown and how uh, how uh, many more animals you saw and um, uh, how fresh the air was, right? And this is, and I live in the city. I live in the southern part of Cologne. Um, it's green here, but I'm very, it's a million uh, inhabitant city. Uh, but certainly a lot of, uh, stuff like in terms of environment, in terms of not sitting in a tin box somewhere uh, on a motorway, that quality of life uh, increased tremendously. There's also, whilst the people who had uh, small children, uh, they had a lot of challenges, I think. Um, several fathers said to me um, that this time that they'd normally be sitting in their um, uh, car uh, in the evening, was now uh, at the end of the day, they could now spend time with their child, you know, and they suddenly kind of opened their eyes to how how important that was and how valuable that was uh, to be able to spend more time with their children. Um, what's very clear is that there's no, uh, it's not so like off the peg solutions, right? We we thought a little bit about in in some terms about uh, standard solutions, but really it was very much about uh, coming up with individual solutions. So the requirements, needs of the people uh, working for us was very different. But in fact, that's not anything new, right? That's what we do every day. We don't treat John the same way that we treat Philippa. Um, certainly in terms of fairness and uh, uh, re rem remuneration and so forth. But um, it's very clear that we all have different focuses and different uh, needs. And uh, we as team uh, members, as teammates, uh, as servant leaders, uh, we take them, uh, we deal with them differently, right? Uh, depending on uh, what the individual needs are. So lots of tailor-made solutions for people. Um, I mentioned it before, uh, sound and vision uh, was very important. So get some screens to people, uh, get some headphones to people, help them set up, uh, give them feedback what's working and what's not working on the other end of their setup. Um, we even had uh, tables and chairs. I don't know if chairs. Chairs is probably a lie, but we, uh, sorry, tables is probably a lie, but we definitely sent chairs to people who were sitting on shitty kitchen chairs and we sent them their office chair home uh, so that they didn't uh, break their backs. One big uh, new kind of flexibility was not just that we had home office, but we brought in work anywhere as a principle. And so 
uh, this came out really strongly, really early from the leadership of the company that they wished that uh, all members or uh, all employees at Trusted Shops could really work uh, anywhere that they wanted. Now, this represented uh, special uh, challenges. So, for example, what happens about uh, having data outside of the EU? And there is a way of dealing with that, but you couldn't actually send the data to somebody who wanted to work in Moscow. Uh, Moscow, they couldn't uh, deal with the data there, uh, but there is a tunnel, uh, a digital tunnel solution that keeps all the data uh, in uh, Germany or inside the EU, um, but um, allows the person to to sit uh, outside of the EU and, and work on it. So this was something uh, new that happened, but really just accelerated an existing wish uh, that some people had. So once the uh, dust had settled uh, over everything, um, um, I, I think uh, obviously uh, what I have touched on a little bit but not so strongly was the emotional impact of everything. So obviously uh, we've had one colleague who lost an uncle to uh, COVID-19 19 related uh, illness. Um, uh, I think a lot of people are worried about their parents, uh, they're worried about their kids. So you shouldn't underestimate the external uh, uh, the external um, effects um, and the emotional impact of uh, all this stuff going on around. But I think certainly there was a, a, like a feeling of, um, okay, we've made this change, we found a way of working, and um, once the dust has settled, um, then what you see is, um, that it's really the tried and tested uh, values and principles and practices that count. And what do I mean that, by that? Well, you know, agility, the ability to, to pivot really quickly, to react to new market uh, and societal conditions and company uh, conditions really quickly. That's not uh, COVID, has, uh, the corona situation has showed us that. Um, we can do it, hopefully, in a lot of companies. Um, um, and it demonstrates how important it is uh, to be agile, right? Uh, that you're not stuck there like a, a rabbit in the headlines, frozen in their headlights, uh, and you get run over by the truck, right? It's the fact you're going to be able to jump out of the way and find a new way of uh, getting home, whatever. Um, What's another tried and tested and uh, uh, principle is continuous improvement. We're doing this anyway, right? We should be looking every single day, how can we improve the way we work? How can we improve our communication? How can we improve uh, our processes? Um, how can we improve ourselves through learning, right? And so uh, corona, um, the corona situation, uh, meant that it was really important for us uh, to uh, improve on, for example, the technical setups that people had. Um, uh, but that's nothing new, right? It's something that we should be doing every single day. Another thing uh, was ownership, right? So we really, really needed to step up. Um, we needed management to have trust um, in, that we were able to do it. And we, as uh, team uh, members, we needed to take ownership and make things happen and not ask, uh, oh, can you bring my coffee? Or my coffee is not warm enough. Warm up your own coffee. Bring your own coffee, right? Sort out some of these problems yourself. And I think that, uh, so the, the level of ownership of the people uh, in the teams and the individuals uh, was uh, raised uh, through this experience. But once again, Ownership is a value that should be very strong anyway. Um, I think uh, and what's a bit counterintuitive was uh, team spirit. So I heard from some colleagues 
from other companies, but people doing the same kind of job as me, that their teams were falling apart uh, because of Corona. And then I sp spoke with them and said, well, uh, yeah, uh, and I dug into it a little bit. Okay, so it turns out these were teams where perhaps there were systemic issues beforehand. Perhaps uh, uh, a very common feedback was these were people who were not uh, using video. So they weren't looking at each other when they were speaking with each other. And surprise, surprise, the empathy that they had for each other was reduced. So my contention is that the team was broken anyway. And if you had a good team spirit to begin with, in fact, what we uh, experienced, uh, certainly in the three teams that I serve, was that we kind of pulled together, in fact, even though, and what I mean that being counterintuitive, is the fact that we, um, uh, we actually uh, uh, geographically uh, were dislocated, right? We, we were working in all different places. But in terms of getting stuff done, uh, working together, uh, doing our retros, uh, being open about the issues that we were facing, all that stuff were ki was kind of strengthened uh, through. Okay, we're gonna uh, we're gonna master this thing called Corona. We're gonna uh, we're gonna achieve uh, a successful move from on-site to remote working, and. Um, I think uh, this is one of the things that um, this was really the key thing that made me think about if the important stuff is already in place, like the values, clear principles, uh, teams which work together, um, then we will master something like Corona. And that's kind of uh, the key of my contention that whilst a lot of stuff has changed, essentially the core value stuff remains the same. Focus, really, really important, right? Um, so we had to focus very much on uh, becoming, uh, getting back online and able to work for a short amount of time. That was our focus. And then we could shift our focus back on creating value for end users again. And, and creating hot shit, right? Great uh, product again. So, but focus is a really important value anyway, if you're working, uh, well, if you're working anywhere, right? And in your personal life even, is focus is often important. So again, this is a, a tried and tested, important, old fashioned value uh, that came to the foreground during the Corona crisis. And then I think you had courage, you know? You had to have courage to believe that it would work. You had courage to uh, speak clearly with managers about what was working, what was not working. Um, openness and courage with yourself. It's like, am I really working in a way that is good for me, good for the company, et cetera? Um, commitment to the team, commitment to... Uh, the uh, project of moving work from uh, on-site to a remote. Um, but commitment is absolutely central to whether um, we uh, are productive or not, whether we, you, you know, uh, feeling like getting up in the morning and doing my job uh, is, is pretty central to whether what we do is any good or not, right? Um, openness is another um, really, really important uh, value. Uh, and you had to be open in this case to the possibilities of remote work, uh, of, okay, what chances are represented, uh, what opportunities are represented by this uh, shitty situation, you know? It's like we'd all hoped for a proper uh, pandemic with zombies, you know? And what do we get? We get shitty corona. It wasn't even fun, right? But we've got to be open enough to uh, take it on and to find solutions for it. So my contention is uh, whether we're working remote or on-site, um, with corona or without, it's all about values. And um, this represents uh, this representation of you know who are we, um, 
our self-image, our identity, the values that we hold, um, the principles that arise out of those values uh, as guided by our convictions and beliefs, yeah, um, which then underpin our practices uh, and our behaviors and habits, uh, both privately and professionally. Um, that remains, this picture is as relevant, even more so perhaps, during uh, corona time as uh, before, or hopefully there will be an after as well. So what did we learn? Well, we learned don't panic, right? And that whilst it feels like everything changes, everything in fact does remain the same. And that's it from me, um, except for uh, if I'm able to help with any questions that you may have. I see there's some here. Da, 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 restarted, restarted. OK, so thank you for the kind um, feedback uh, from FAF. 286 and TOC 149. Uh, do you, can I help you with, do you have any specific individual questions to our experience uh, with Corona? Or anything else, interpretive dance, jokes? Okay, thanks, Bitten. I think we can allow everybody to, um, to talk now because it's such a, sh cozy group. Indeed, Thank you, um, I'm looking at the viewers who might be wanting to ask a question. So if you want to unlock your microphone, you can do so now. In order to do that, you have to click the headphone icon in the bottom of the screen uh, to leave the audio stream and then rejoin and select your microphone. Is there anyone here who has had uh, radically different um, experiences, or do you see um, do you see parallels in your own world? Und die, die gerne Deutsch sprechen möchten, können das auch. I don't know what uh, languages we have here. I suggest we're mo mostly Hermans. Hmm. Thank you for the T-shirt, by the way. Look, I have a Forscon T-shirt. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Uh, what do we think will keep? I think the uh, I think the main thing that will. Thank you for the question, um, Fafnir. Uh, I think that the main thing that we're going to keep is anything is impossible. It's like the stuff that we preach as uh, agilists, right? Uh, don't hold yourself back. Um, focus on what is possible, not on what is not possible. I think that's an aspect because we have the the killer argument now. Next time somebody says, "Oh no, it's not possible," I, I used to say the problem we have is that our real competition is some guy sitting in Hanoi or in uh, somewhere like that. Um, and uh, we need to be faster. We need to get moving. We need to get our fingers out of our behinds and create value and not uh, worry about like legal shit all the time, but worry about added value for the end user, right? And I think now we can point to this experience every single time and say, Okay, we all said back then that we would not be able to introduce new tools. We all said that we would become less, uh, or a lot of managers believed that we'd be less productive if uh, people were allowed to organize their own work day. And so I think that uh, that's going to be the main thing, is the questions about autonomy, self-organization, and that the um, <clears throat> stuff is possible. I hope that answers your question, Fafnir. Any other questions? Yeah, so you as a remote admin, uh, 149, I think you had a lot of um, 
Okay, uh, you had a lot of uh, individual uh, handling of in, uh, individual problems, right? So how do you organize meetings? Uh, well, I'm actually, uh, I won't use the word, uh, the bad word in Germany, but I am very streng, I'm very disciplinarian as regards um, uh, meetings. So I say, we are meeting today in order to discuss sandwiches. At the end of the meeting, we will have decided which sandwiches we're going to eat and where we're going to buy them. Like really, really stumpf, but that's kind of my style. But again, I think that's a great that you asked this question, Lothar, because this is another example of you have to be uh, really clear about your time boxing and also obviously uh, what's the objective of this meeting, what's your desired outcomes. Um, and you have to be that just as much online or in person. So um, in terms of meetings, uh, what has been different is that I think sitting in meetings the whole day with headphones and video is extremely uh, difficult. Uh, it's very tiring. And so, and this is also borne out by the numbers. So what's happening is that people are having shorter meetings and but more of them. Um, so I think that's one of the things that's happening. Um, I, I, I mean, this is something that was kind of a, a, uh, an issue for me before Corona, but why does every single meeting have to be 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 120 minutes? There must be things which you can do in 20 minutes as well, right? And so this is some of, uh, something I think that I'd, I'd uh, with or without Corona, encourage everyone to look at which meetings don't bring any value, can you just simply throw out? Make meetings pull rather than push. So don't oblige people to come to meetings because that suddenly meaning, means that the person who organizes that meeting needs to think about what value that the participant has from the meeting. And also it's uh, empirically proven that smaller meetings are more productive. So uh, try and have smaller, shorter meetings more often. Um, do I think that the IT community is handling this crisis better than the other professionals? I think in IT, uh, we have consummate professionals who really like uh, their systems. Uh, they don't want to introduce. I read somewhere that for a company with a hundred people, uh, with two hundred people, you have hundred different tools in total being used. This is an IT. Uh, person's um, nightmare. So I'd make a big difference between like office support IT and developers. I think they're two very different kinds of creatures. Um, I don't think that we are handling it any better or any worse. In fact, you're opening a really good, um, uh, you're, you're delivering something on a silver platter to me, and that is if the people have got the shit together beforehand, they probably got the shit together uh, afterwards as well. And that's irrespective of whether they're in sales, marketing, okay, let's not ex exaggerate. Uh, irrespective of whether they're in sales, IT, development, whatever, uh, if, uh, if they have a good, strong foundation beforehand, uh, they will deal with the crisis better. But I don't see a big difference between um, IT and, uh, 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 okay, I won't be uh, rude about marketing people and marketing and HR and so forth. And I think it's also quite individual, right? Some people, and this is, uh, this, is not, uh, this is not about right or wrong, but some people are very open to change and other people require a lot more um, security, right? Um, and that's just personal psychology, and that's perfectly okay. That's not a problem. So, and then we are back to us who help other people work, um, being sensitive to listening to, open to these different requirements for different people. Uh, so again, this kind of, uh, it's not a uh, one size fits all. If uh, any of this makes um, any sense to you and you think you would have value of a further conversation with me, uh, you can hit me up on LinkedIn um, under my name 
Peter Larson, Cologne, and then you or Trusted Shops, and you'll find me. Um, and you're you're welcome to send me an invitation. Uh, perhaps just say Froshcon or something like that in it. Um, I'm also on the other one, uh, but I don't like it. Uh, crossing, uh, sing. Um, are there any other questions for this suddenly sunny Saturday morning? Okay. Right. Thanks for your talk, Peter. Thank, Thank you, you, Max, for the invitation. I really enjoyed it.